So I saw that uh, Practical Engineering put out a new video about a Trump or Trump pump. And I figure I have one right here. So let's see how that works. Starting off, I have a hydroelectric system. It's a small one. I'm still working on it. Up at the top of the hill is a spring that comes out of the hill into a barrel, a 55 gallon barrel. And then it goes into a pipe. And that pipe comes down here. We can see it coming out of the leaves there where I have it covered up so it doesn't freeze. And it runs in here through a shutoff valve and then through a valve manifold. This is uh, all temporary stuff until I get the final one built. And this is like the perfect setup for a trump pump. So right now I have a static pressure of 125 or 123 PSI, somewhere around there. And this little stack here should collect any bu bubbles that come down the line. If I open this up to flow too much water, more water than the spring can supply. So I'm gonna turn these on. Uh, we'll do a small jet first. Not enough to kick it over, so let me give it a little kick. All right, it goes. And then this is the bigger jet. And that's hooked up to a charge controller inside, so it's trying to suck energy to run the charge controller. And then, just to dump a little bit extra water so we can get down to the point where it's sucking air, I have this additional hose hooked up. I'm gonna turn that on and let it drain. Okay. And I'm gonna let it drain to the point where it's starting to suck air, which then is a trump. Okay, it would appear that we have too much water to suck any air. It's filling up too fast. So I'm gonna put a bigger nozzle on. This is a 3D printed nozzle that I made myself. And this is another 3D printed nozzle I made myself, but it's a smaller diameter. And here's what the turbine looks like if anybody's interested. That's a Pelton turbine. All right, let's see this work. Small nozzle now. And big nozzle. Okay, uh, my goal there, I unfortunately didn't quite work out the way I was expecting. It, it just, it's variable depending on the amount of water that I have supplying the spring up there. What I was trying to do is modulate the, the jet here so that it's only allowing the air that passes up through the, uh, the gauge stack there out. 
So if it's too wide, it's getting some water with the air, and if it's too small, then you're just not capturing air much at all. And a lot of air is flowing past into the turbine, which is not good for it. So uh, that's a tr Trump pump that I've built in inadvertently, and it, it works, but it only works for a specific flow range up top, uh, and that's highly dependent on the amount of pipe or the size of the pipe that I have. And you saw that the bubbles that were coming out, that the final working pressure there was around 40 PSI. So the bubbles that came down the line would have been going into this at about one third of the size that they entered the pipe. So it's compressing the bubbles, and then when they come out of this jet here, they expand, and that's what that popping noise was that you heard. And so for that reason, I have to be very careful about the amount of water that's coming through here so I don't drain the line and suck air and damage things. Since we're done here, I'm gonna turn this back on with the now small nozzle. Uh, that's all I need to run, and it was running just fine with it. And it's doing about 150 watts continuous output. And you, you could kind of hear it modulating because the charge controller was turning on and off because the batteries were full. While we're waiting for the water line to fill back up, it's about 70 gallons worth of water because I drained most of it, I uh, take this moment to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys around later. Stick around for the turbine spinning up under full pressure. Okay, we're holding steady at 122 PSI. Let's turn it on. And the charge controller is hooked up, so it should start regulating down the RPMs and sucking power.